Welcome back. The military struggles to recruit and retain the talent it needs to make the most of emerging technologies. The National Security Commission on Artificial Intelligence has pitched the idea for a digital service academy modeled after West Point that could train civilians to address high-tech issues of the future. Harrison Schramm is a senior fellow at the Center for Strategic and Budgetary Assessments. Todd Lyons is vice president of the Naval Postgraduate School Alumni Association and Foundation. They're writing about a U.S. digital service academy in War on the Rocks. Gentlemen, welcome. Thanks for coming on the program. Um, you write in this piece something that I think is a, a, a fascinating observation, that this, this academy should be porous in the sense that professionals can flow freely between government and industry. That concept is different than the service academies that we have now. How do you envision that that would work? Either one of you may take that question. So, so to start with, as a Naval Academy graduate, uh, the service academies are porous in the sense that there's a cadre of uh, professional military officers that rotate in and out that uh, bring their fleet experience uh, to, to the academy. Uh, in the case of a digitally focused uh, educational endeavor, uh, we would be looking for those people to be porous in the sense of having uh, operational tours uh, in government or coming back and forth from industry. What's and beyond the that, I would actually say that it's also about making it porous to industry as well as uh, broader academia. So thinking through ways that we could make it uh, easier for them to provide their best talent in, in the kinds of slices that they would like, and then having the talent that's at the Digital Service Academy go and learn more, work with the commercial sector that provides many of the services that we rely on. One of the suggestions that you make in this piece is uh, to that point, imagine having the best minds in AI at Microsoft, Google, Apple, Facebook, et cetera, spend 10% of their time teaching the fundamentals of their latest technology to the next generation. We've seen some reticence among some of those companies to work at all with the federal government. What's the selling point that one would use to encourage them that maybe they're not crazy about some of the other work that uh, the government is doing, but that a digital service academy holds value for them to interact with. So for both of us uh, being uh, former military officers, government work is important and, and the work of the nation is, uh, it's important, it impacts people's lives. And so there's a tremendous draw uh, to service uh, for people uh, regardless of their discipline. And I'd highlight that it's really about establishing the Digital Service Academy as a public trust and so if they want to be part of the solution that develops the ethical conduct, how we're going to adopt this uh, set of really enabling technologies more broadly, that we need to have them involved in that. And I think if we offer them the opportunity to shape how we're going to do adoption and, and do ethical uh, adoption of AI, they're gonna to wanna to be part of that process. I read between the lines, gentlemen, a uh, reference to the National Defense Strategy. Please correct me if I'm wrong. The digital service and the academy that supports it would be a first step toward the whole of government approaches that are used by America's competitors, specifically China. What, uh, does, what disadvantage do we have now in that whole of government approach or lack thereof that this uh, concept would help remedy? I think it would. I think it would give uh, people, particularly in the disciplines of AI and machine learning, a common framework uh, from which to begin. And that's something that the service academies do, uh, as uh, and in addition to the educational pieces. But imagine a uh, a, a government-run institution that would uh, that would collect the talent from across the country and uh, bring those folks up and then give them opportunities to serve in government and then follow on moving back and forth between government and uh, it, you know, uh, industry for a very long and prosperous career. And I think from the perspective of the great power competition more broadly and our allies and partners, we really want to give uh, the allies, partners, those in the middle, a reason to choose to follow us and how we adopt artificial intelligence and its enabling technologies rather than following a more of a Chinese model. And I think by doing that, by providing a common framework for our own government to lead the adoption of that, we'll then create a broader framework 
for our partners and allies to follow and trace. We have about 90 seconds left, gentlemen, and I appreciate it when uh, people who write pieces like this get right to the point, as you did in this segment, how to fail at building a program. What are the elements to make sure we avoid doing in building a program like this? So I think I think the most important thing, and by the way, it's not always obvious what success is, but if you can determine what failure would look like and then drive away from that, that is certainly an initial steer. Uh, so one of the things that I think is at the core of all of our comments about uh, how to fail is essentially uh, there needs to be a conscious decision made about how practitioner focused versus how theory focused the academy should be and then understand that once it gets started and once it starts to produce graduates, it's going to have a cascading effect on government service and then industry overall. And from my perspective, you know, and having been at the Naval Postgraduate School, it's understanding that when you have a set of, you know, professionals who are focused on solving real problems, leveraging the best technology, that you end up with something really amazing and it's about providing the solutions that our country needs not just you know something that's going to sit on a shelf and gather dust todd lyons harrison shram thanks very much for the conversation great to have you here thank, thank you, you.